Hey everyone, welcome back to Cooking with Shotgun Red, and I'm Sheila. I'm Jennifer. And St. Patrick's Day is coming up, and we got some recipes. We do. A lot of people keep asking, do you guys have any cabbage recipes? Why, yes we do. <laughs> so, yeah. you not only one, but three, three recipes. And we are going to take you to each one of these and show you these are wonderful recipes that you can do with cabbage, and you're going to love it. So we're going to show you how it's done. Today we're going to make baked cabbage steaks. What you want to do is just rinse off your cabbage, obviously. Now, I got to tell you, the smaller ones are the best to do this with because they're easier to cut, but I could only find one small one. There was a few of them in the tray at Kroger's, and I had to kind of go with another one. And I wanted to get two to make sure I had enough to make my little recipe here. And what we're going to do is you want to peel off some of the outside layers of these cabbage heads here. That looks about perfect. You'll know when you get down to that nice light colored cabbage that looks really good right there. So I'm going to cut off the bottom of this stem. I don't want to core it out because I kind of want the core to hold the slices together but I, I, but I do want to cut it off so it'll set level. So I just want to cut off just the part that's sticking out there. Then when you do that you've got a nice secure way to set it down on the table so you don't slip with your knife or whatever and be careful with your knife now. So what I'm going to do here, first thing I'm going to do is cut off a part that won't lay nice and flat about this much. I'll tell you what I like to do. I like to take these pieces, cut them up and put, put them in a pan on the stove, pour in some chicken broth, a little bit of butter and some seasoning, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, whatever spices. Just put it on simmer and go watch TV with Sheila when I come back. Man, I can eat this stuff. It's so delicious, but this is even better. I'll cut one off the opposite side. And like I said, I'm kind of squaring this up because I want a good looking product. And we're going to cut these about an inch thick all the way down here. Now you'll notice how the core I'm going to keep that too. I'm going to cook that up. You'll notice how the core here holds this all together and that's what we want that to do. So I think we can get about four of them out of this little head here. And like I say, any of the extra ones that come off, because we want to make it look pretty, any of the extra leaves that come off, we're going to cook them up in the pan. And we're just going to keep these nice looking ones for our presentation. So I got a little room. I'm going to spray this over here. I've got a cookie sheet covered with aluminum foil, but even though I got it covered with aluminum foil, and I'm moving this over here because I know Sheila's going to say put it in the middle of the frame, right Sheila? Exactly. And then I'm going to lay these babies on there like that. And this should make two more because it's about two inches thick. And I'm going to keep this, like I said, for my late night snack. Let me see any of the extra ones, peel them off. That way when you serve them up they're going to look good. We're going to get just about the right amount. Like I said, the littler ones are a little easier to work with. And look what I have. Does that look good? That looks good. Can you see it on camera? Very good. We're going to make up our little butter sauce to go on right now. All right, we're going to make a little butter sauce for the top, but you can rub the bottom of these with some olive oil before you put them in there. But I use this Pam olive oil spray, and I put it on there pretty thick. So we already kind of got our olive oil underneath. But we're going to make this stuff. I got this little gravy boat from Sheila. I said, do we got that little gravy boat around here? Because it'll be perfect for pouring. I put a whole stick of butter in here, put it in the microwave and melted it. And then I took my little handy dandy garlic paste and that's what I got right here. We're going to put in just a nice big heaping tablespoon of that in that little butter dish. Then we're going to put in a teaspoon of black pepper. We're not going to put any salt in there. 
we're going to put in a teaspoon of this stuff right here. And McCormick don't sponsor our show, but I love this McCormick's Gourmet Smoked Paprika. We're going to put in one teaspoon of that. Then we're also going to put in a, a tablespoon of olive oil because we want plenty in there. And that's our little ingredients for the top. Sheila, get a close-up of this. Let me go ahead and mix this. Thank you, Sheila. How's it look? It does look delicious, doesn't it? All right, now we got it all mixed up good. We're going to go to a little wider shot and pour this on our baked cabbage steaks. Not baked yet, but we're getting ready to do that. All right, I got all my goodies mixed up in my little gravy boat here, but I also got my little basting brush. Look at the color of that with that paprika and stuff in there. That is so good. You'll notice that this is running right down through all the fibers of that cabbage. So it's sinking down in there. Because you'll brush it on, you'll think, where's it going? It's going down in through there so nice. We got one other little surprise for this recipe that you're going to love because you get to make all the choices at the house there, which which, what we want you to do anyway. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bake this in the oven. Let's put this in the oven at 350, 10 minutes before it's done. 30 minutes after we put it in, we're going to coat the top with some Parmesan cheese, cook it another 10 minutes, and we'll bring it back here on the camera so you can see what is just cut apart tender and the most delicious flavor. Because cabbage really changes flavor once you bake it. Oh, we'll see you in, well, actually 40 minutes. Just got back from the oven, 40 minutes in there at 350 degrees. It's starting to get a little crisp around the edges. The cheese is melted great. And I did something with the cheese a little different. Come on over here, let me explain. Would you looky here, Sheila, how'd I do? You did great. She did all the work. She put it in the oven, did all the bacon and all that stuff. I like to take credit from time to time. Yeah, that did great. <laughs> you did fantastic. You got it nice and golden brown around the edges. Now, if you want to bake this 45 minutes or 50 minutes, make it even a little more crispy, it's totally up to you. But here's what happened. I mentioned about the cheese. I put that Parmesan cheese on these four, and I ran out. That's all I had in that little bowl. I didn't have any more in the fridge, but I looked in the fridge, and I had some Mexican four-cheese blend shredded, so it went on these four. And you can do whatever you want when it comes to the cheeses. Man, you can use Parmesan. You can use mozzarella. You could use some... What's your favorite cheese? You like spicy stuff? Pepper Jack. Pepper Jack. That would be great. Shredded Pepper Jack. But let's go ahead and plate one of these up here. It is so soft. It's fall apart. Let me get the troublemaker out of the way here. Lay him right there. I am ready to do some damage on this. Man, you don't even really need a knife. I just, I just grabbed one. You can just cut it with a fork. Let me get this outside edge. Look at there. It just wants to fall apart. I'm telling you what, that's the good part. Here we go. All right, let me give this a bite now. Mm. Put the cheeses that you like on here and make yourself some baked cabbage steaks tonight. It's going to be fantastic. Question. Is this the most delicious baked cabbage steaks with two types of cheeses you ever ate? If it ain't, it ought to be. Today we have a recipe that both of us love. You know, I remember my mom making it and I just love... I love that. ...stuffed cabbage. And it's really delicious. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to have your head of mm -hmm. cabbage and you're going to want to flip that over and cut the heart out, which is this section right in here. Okay, so once, once you get that heart cut out, you just set that aside. The first thing we're going to do is put this in our boiling water that we already have on the stove and get this boiling. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to get all these layers cooked. So what you want to do is you're going to want to put this face down in the water. As this starts to boil, you'll see that these leaves will just start peeling off. Now you can take this out and separate them with a fork or you can do it like this. Sometimes it's got to like cook a little bit more and as each layer starts to peel, I just peel them off and set them aside on the pan um, so they're nice and pliable and we can start making our roll-ups with them. So what you can do, you can see this starts to peel off real easy and you can just take a fork and just kind of separate it 
and if all the layers aren't cooked, you can always put this back in the hot water again. But, uh, and then these should just start peeling off and then we'll separate these and let them cool off a little bit before we start rolling them up. We're going to take our onion, it's about one medium onion chopped up. And we just wanna saute these up just a little bit. It doesn't take very long for these onions to get sauteed up. They, they start getting translucent. Look, the one's flying, Sheila. Oh, I'm gonna <laughs> eat that one later. It doesn't take very long for these to get translucent and you'll start to see them just kind of soften up and up. I'm going to put a tablespoon and a half of minced garlic. I love garlic. We're going to go ahead and add a cup and a half of our mushrooms. Now you know mushrooms, they're going to shrink up on you and they're not going to take very long to cook. So we're just going to get them just a little bit cooked down, and then we're gonna add this into our stuffing that we're getting ready to make. We've got a pound of lean ground beef here. We're gonna put that in. Yep, there we are. And we've got some rice, and this is about three quarter cup of uncooked rice. We're gonna put that in there. About a cup of tomato puree, and so that's not quite, this is a uh, 15 ounce can, so I'm just gonna put about a cup of that in there. And puree is just a little bit thicker than your, your typical tomato sauce because I'm going to use the rest of this for the topping. And? And we've got a tablespoon of Sheila's favorite word, Worcestershire sauce. I hate that word. <laughs> the W sauce, as she calls it. Yep, that's We're going to put it. that in there. In this little bowl, we have a teaspoon and a half of salt. Or garlic powder, about a teaspoon. Yeah, about a teaspoon. And we've got about a teaspoon of pepper, right? Right. Okay, and we're just going to mix that all that together and put that in our filling here. here and then we've got three teaspoons of fresh chopped parsley and I've already got these measured out so we'll put that in there and then we're going to get our onions and our mushrooms and garlics that we just sauteed up. I'm just gonna put all that right on in there. So once you get all that mixed up we're just gonna set that bowl aside and we're going to start getting our cabbage ready to go so we can roll this inside of it. Now that this is all soft and pliable, and we're just going to just take it and flatten it out, and you're just gonna take a sharp paring knife, and you just wanna cut that off so it makes it easier when you go to- The rolls. You're rolling up of your stuff. So we're just gonna set that aside and grab another one, and you just lay it flat. Once again, and that, that side, that's that little side that's sticking up right there. You just want to cut that off. And we're just going to trim that off right there. You just cut the annoying thing off. Then. That annoying thing off that'll keep everything <laughs> yeah. from rolling up correctly. So now that we've got it all ready to go, we've got our 9 by 13 dish here. We're going to take, what I've got in here is I've got about 3 quarters of a cup of beef broth. Now you could use the, the water from the cabbage or beef broth. I like the beef broth, don't you? I do. It, I, it gives it more flavor. I think so. And, um, and the rest of that can of the puree, the tomato puree that we had. Uh, and so we just mix that together. And so I'm going to scoop a little bit of this down along the bottom of the pan. Here. And we're going to make 12, a dozen, an even yes. dozen. So what we're going to do is we're just going to divide this in half so we know exactly how much is going in each one and that we have enough filling to go in each one. And then we're going to divide it in half again. So I kind of have an idea that each one of these quarters is going to do three each. Yeah, they have the same amount in each one. In, in each one, yeah. And we, and we won't run out of it. So, um, okay. So Sheila's got our cabbage roll ready to go. So yes. I'm going to take part of my first quarter here. And we're just going to put that in there. Then I'm roll it up here and then bring this in on each side. Mm -hmm. And then roll it. Roll it and roll you want to put the seam side down. Now that I got these rolled up and in the pan, Jen's gonna put the rest of this sauce on top of these cabbage rolls. Yeah, and this is the rest of that puree and the beef broth that we put on the bottom. 
and we're just gonna drizzle that right across the top you know some people like a lot of tomato sauce some people like just a little bit um, it, it just depends on how I mean you could do more than this if you'd like to but you know it really just depends on your taste and I'm gonna add in addition to that um, we've got some diced tomatoes Diced tomatoes, that and would, that'd be really good on top of that and I'm just gonna put a couple little chunks across there because I think it will add a lot of flavor I love tomato anyway so we got this ready to go. We're gonna put it in the oven. It's on 350 degrees it still. Is. And it's gonna be about an hour and a half and we'll be back. We're back and this smells so good. Oh my gosh, it smells delicious. Mm, it was in yeah. there for an hour and a half yes. on 350 degrees mm -hmm. and we let it sit for about yes. 20 minutes and rest. And we'd sprinkle a little bit of fresh parsley on top and doesn't that look good? Well, it's really pretty when the parsley's on it there. It does. If this isn't the best stuffed cabbage roll, <laughs> if it ain't, it, it ought to be. be. Today we're making southern fried cabbage. Okay, so I pre-greased this Dutch oven. And we're adding one pound of chopped bacon. And we are just going to brown this up. We've got this Dutch oven on medium heat. We'll go ahead and get this all cooked up. All right, now that's looking good. Take a slotted spoon and set this aside on a plate. Then you're gonna add one pound of sliced smoked sausage. Right into this yummy bacon grease. And we're just gonna slightly brown the sausage up. All right, now that it's brown on both sides, we're gonna go ahead and take the slotted spoon again, and we're gonna set it aside right next to the bacon. The sausage is pretty much cooked already, so you don't really have to uh, overcook it. I'm just browning them up and adding a little bit more flavor to my grease in the pan here. You're going to add one cup of diced onions. And we're going to put that right into the drippings. Saute that up. And then add one cup each red bell pepper and a green bell pepper diced. Yeah, we already got those diced up. I'm going to just saute that up with the onion. And then... You add around four pats of butter. So here comes the chopped cabbage. Got it all chopped up. All right, this is not all going to fit in this pot right now. So what we're going to do is put about half of this in because it's a lot. And we're going to let it reduce down a little bit. Then I'm going to take the lid and cover it and let that cook for about two to three minutes until that cabbage reduces down and then I can add the rest of it in. Now you can add the rest of the cabbage. Yes. And got, we've got room in there now. So it seems like a lot, but you know, cabbage really, you know, cooks down pretty good. So we're gonna stir that in with all that yummy stuff on the bottom. Get it all mixed in. We're gonna cover it. All right, look at that. Now we're talking. Then we're gonna add. One teaspoon of ground pepper. One teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of garlic powder and one teaspoon of onion powder. And I'm gonna mix that together. I'll sprinkle a little bit more. Just wanna make sure I get it all covered. Then one teaspoon of Cajun Creole seasoning. This smells so good already. Oh yeah. 
very filling. And this would be good any time of the year. Comfort food. All right, we're gonna turn the heat off. Now here comes the good part, adding the smoked sausage back in. And the bacon. Oh yeah, put that back in there. Mix that all together. It smells so, so good. Got all that bacon and sausage and... You ready to dish some of this up? It makes up for a pretty dish also, don't you think? Oh yeah, look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? You have got to try this for dinner. So I'm ready for my bowl. What about you? Oh, absolutely. You've got to try it. Yum. I'm ready. As Steve would say, is this the best southern fried cabbage? If it ain't, it ought to be. We'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Bye. We hope you enjoy this recipe, and we really hope you subscribe to our channel. That's easy. Little Shotgun Red's face will pop up over here in a little bit. When you click on it, it'll say subscribe. Then you're subscribed. Next to it, it'll be a little notification bell. If you click that little bell, then YouTube will send you every single one of our recipes or a notification that we posted one as soon as it comes out. See you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Is this the best? If it ain't, it ought to be.